For a long time, I just had one, one model, Jones 29 inch model bike, which came in titanium, steel, space frame or diamond frame, but it was one, one geometry of bike, tight wheelbase, which was the norm. Most people were looking for a tight wheelbase. However, I had I'd been riding tandems and riding different kinds of bikes and doing a lot of experiments and realizing that maybe a long wheelbase bike would be very beneficial. This is a bike I, I bought in Taiwan while I was working for GT. Uh, they sent me over to Taiwan to do some work on bikes over there. And I, I picked this up. Uh, it's a traditional, traditional bike. You'll see this all around the world, this kind of bike. And I've, I've had it for years. And this is a bike that I, I pulled it down and went for a ride several years ago on this. I hadn't ridden it in a long, long time. And I was really impressed with how well it rode. Besides being very heavy and having skinny tires and bad brakes, I liked I liked how it was long. I liked the wheelbase. It reminded me of riding a tandem and the stability I have in a tandem. And then I started thinking about bikes and how bikes are designed and I realized, you know, why, why do I need to have a super short wheelbase all the time unless I'm just trying to do wheelies and get up on my front wheel. But if I want a bike that really can carry a load, has a smooth ride and rides better, maybe I should consider a longer wheelbase like the tandem and like this. I built a bike uh, I call it the Long Ranger and I'll show it to you now. I wanted to experiment and see what would happen if I built a bike with bigger wheels, longer wheelbase. So after riding this for a long time and developing this for, for years, um, eventually went out and developed the Plus. And here it is, the Plus. Uh, many years of thinking and working and developing towards this, now I have it and I'm really enjoying this bike. Uh, the long wheelbase, very high fork offset. 67 and a half degree head angle, 71 degree seat angle, 19 inch chain stays. Again, 76 millimeters in offset. It's uh, the, the geometry and the numbers on this are far from normal, but the bike has a really nice ride and uh, it opened my eyes up a lot to uh, how I had been riding and how I can ride in the future. A little, little bit about the body position and geometry of this bicycle. Uh, I have it set up so that I'm standing more on my feet. And I wanna show you how that works. The, the fit of this bicycle is very different than a normal mountain bike or a normal road bike. Most bikes have a, a longer reach in the front because the, the, head, the, the top tube length is actually longer, so that moves the head tube forward. And then the seat angle is steeper, and that moves your butt forward and moves the handlebars forward so that you're generally kind of lean forward in this falling forward position that I can't mimic unless I have a handlebar to lean on. Where with this bike, um, the seat is slid back. This is what I've been doing on my, on my bikes for years, is sliding the seat further back by changing the seat angle. This has a 71 degree seat angle. Shortening the forward reach. This bike has a reach of right around 400 millimeters, which is shorter than on a size small of other brands of bikes. And this allows me to stand in this position where my feet, where my feet are taking the weight. So as I'm hitting bumps, my hands aren't taking the bumps. As I'm riding down the trail, my legs are taking the impact and, and taking the weight while my hands are just here for steering, for resting, control, and you know, holding onto the bars basically, but not for supporting my upper body in this forward leaned over position. So lean back, upright position, ready to attack, ready to control, and then you can slide really far back to sit upright, tuck into an aero position, spread out into a relaxed position, hook out up here, um, use the aero bar if you have the aero bar, the narwhal horn. Um, but it's, it's a great position to be in on this bike because you can just bounce and hop exactly where you are on your feet and not have weight on your hands. Where before, I had a much harder time controlling the bike, lifting the front end, you know, waving at somebody, anything. It was harder to control the bike. This is a, a, just a great position to be in. And I'm seeing uh, more and more bikes doing this. Bent seat tubes, more fork offset, shorter reach to the bars, bringing the bar up in your lap a little bit. But the handlebar, the frame and the fork have all evolved together. Um, the handlebar allows you to slide further to the back. So if I'm going down a steep hill, I can shift my weight way to the back and put the front wheel out in front and get behind it and make it down the steep hill without endoing. And if I'm going up a steep hill, I can slide my hands into this forward position, stand up and climb in a very forward position. And I can stand up and climb because a bike without suspension climbs great when you're standing. I get asked a lot about the truss fork. The truss fork is, this is a way to make a fork that is lighter and stiffer than a conventional two-legged fork. The fork is a clamping above the headset, below the headset. We have a big triangular, a, a triangle shape here, another one down here, 
and these work together to make this a very strong structure. Motorcycles used this design years ago. Uh, you see this in bridges and cranes. It's just a trust fork, so it weighs less and it's physically stronger front to back than a two-legged fork. And you really notice this when applying the brakes very hard. You won't get the, the vibration and you won't see the front axle tucking back like you do on normal forks. In fact, this kind of flex is the reason why suspension forks have been going to the oversized lower headset and the tapered steer tube. That's to try to increase the diameter of this so that the fork is not flexing back and forth down here. Um, also this fork, and all my forks are rigid specific, they're shorter. The distance from the, head, from the lower headset to the axle is a shorter distance than you'll normally find because I don't need to have a lot of extra uh, distance for the fork to move up and down or to mimic a suspension fork because this fork is a, is a rigid fork, so it's just long enough to have tire clearance. It has the right amount of offset. So we're using 50 millimeter rims on most of the bikes. Whether it's for the road or for the dirt, these wide rims allow the tire to be ran at a lower pressure while being more stable side to side, giving you more traction, a smoother ride, and lower rolling resistance. It's really incredible. You know, the wide rim makes a really big difference. So 50 millimeter rims on this bike, 29 by three inch tires, riding, uh, we're running them at around 10 to 15 PSI. A fat tire can absorb bumps more rapidly uh, and more efficiently than a, than a suspension system. Suspension systems may be better at like a big impact, a large single drop off or something like that. But then on this bike, because I'm standing in a very upright position, this gives me the ability to absorb big impacts. So a drop off's not a problem, it's just a vibration. And this bike is really doing a great job of absorbing the vibration and allowing me to ride fast and long on this bike and uh, stay comfortable and not wreck. So it's, it's really nice. It's really amazing because now when I go up a steep hill, I don't have to fight for rear wheel traction. When I go down a steep hill, it's, I can go down really steep hills without fear of endowing. I can pull the brakes very hard and come skidding to a two wheel stop instead of flipping over onto my head. I can drift around a corner without spinning out in the corner. I can actually control my slides better. And then the bumps that come into my body from the ground are muted the, because the rear axle is so far behind me and the front axle is so far in front of me, I just don't get the, the impact coming into my body as directly. And a uh, long wheel base is good for carrying a big load too. So we're having people building this bike up for road touring because you can just pack so much onto it. And I think that bikes like this will be, will be seen in the future a lot because the tight wheel base thing has gone as far as it can go and uh, it's good if it's what you want. If you want super agile handling in a trials bike kind of BMXy way, but if what you want is a bike that rides and has a smooth ride, but still can handle all the rough and technical terrain, then, uh, then I like this longer wheelbase.